For us redstoners, lag is something that limits the game to such a degree that is unfathomable. This game has gotten increasingly more intensive over the years without external mods like Lithium and Starlight. So with that, I introduce something that is incredibly important. Lag efficiency. Before getting started, I must talk about some general terms, like TPS and MSPT. TPS is the speed of which your game is running. If the TPS is less than 20, then your server is lagging. MSPT is the main measure of server-side lag. If the MSPT exceeds 50, then your server is lagging, and then your TPS will go down. Alright, so we must talk about how to benchmark your machines. Normally, people will use carpet mod. After installing this mod, you can do slash log TPS, and you can see the MSBT and TPS counter when you hold down tab. Then you can turn on your machine and start to use it. Then do slash tick warp at a given time. For example, here I'm going to do 72,000, which is one hour. After a little bit, you'll get your MSBT rate back. The lower, the better. It is also important to get your background lag. To get that, just turn off everything in your world, and then do the same tick warp command. After getting your MSPT rate back for the test, you must subtract the background lag from the actual machine's lag to get an accurate measurement, like so. That final number will be how laggy your contraption is. Unfortunately, testing a contraption for just an hour isn't good practice whatsoever, at least for general farm testing. Preferably, you test it as long as possible. 24 hours is my normal length, however, for more complex contraptions, you should do much longer, preferably around 400 hours, if not more. Alright. Now that you know how to test your machines, it's time to get into optimizing them. Unfortunately, this changes with versions, but I'll mainly focus on 1.18.2, because that's the latest full release at the time of recording. Anyway, let's get started. Each redstone component has its own weird lag properties with certain habits. I've composed a chart of a few redstone components and how laggy they are, measured in the unit of how laggy observers are. So, for example, Pistons are around 8 times as laggy as observers, and redstone dots are around 5 times as laggy. Some of these components, like the ones marked in red, are tile entities, and are extremely laggy when trying to load or unload large amounts of them at once. There are also ticking tile entities, like hoppers, that get updated every 1 20th of a second, which makes them lag passively. Pistons can also be tile entities. When they are placed regularly, they aren't. But when they extend or retract, they turn into tile entities for a very short period of time, which means large quantities of pistons powering and depowering are extremely laggy, as you are essentially loading and unloading a lot of tile entities very quickly. Now, some components get even worse than this. If you've been into technical Minecraft for longer than a year, you must have heard of the term dustless. This refers to no redstone dust updates while a farm is running. Ever wonder why that exists? Well, it's because redstone dust is extremely laggy. Now, let's look back at the graph I made. You can see that redstone dots are around 5 times as laggy as observers, but it specifies redstone dots. What I didn't include was redstone lines, which are 32 times as laggy as observers. Now, the reason for this is quite ridiculous. When redstone lines change power level, it sends out a lot of block updates, roughly 42. And dust is very well made, so when it turns from power level 15 down to 0, it'll go from power level 15 to 13 to 11 to 9 all the way down to 0. And every time it changes power level, it sends out all those block updates, which means when a redstone line powers and depowers, it sends 336 block updates alone. Thankfully, redstone dots are better. They go from power level 15 straight down to zero, meaning they only send 42 block updates. The funny thing is, dust can actually get worse. Both dots and lines check themselves up to seven times every time they change power level, meaning not only do they get hundreds of block updates, but also a lot of useless checks. Thankfully, some people have created mods that have helped with dust quite a lot, and some of those are in the description. Let's stop talking about how bad Mojang is at making redstone components, and now talk about how bad they are at making lighting engines. Light is managed on a different thread of your CPU, so it doesn't really affect MSPT, unless you're in 1.13 and below. However, it does heavily affect your client FPS. For example, placing a block at height limit creates a massive lag spike, and pretty much anything else that has a lot of light updates kills your client. Light updates can also cause light suppression, where the lighting thread falls far behind the main thread of the game. Light suppression can be useful, but it is incredibly laggy FPS-wise. 
to remove any sort of FPS lag, I just recommend putting a roof on your contraptions. And removing any light sources in there as well, including redstone torches. If you want to learn more about how the lighting engine works, I recommend watching a video by VK Tech, which is linked in the description. Now, to recap really, really quickly, avoid tile entities in areas that get loaded pretty often, and just avoid ticking tile entities in general. Redstone dust is extremely laggy, although you can use mods to get rid of most of the lag, just avoid it when possible. Light updates are very laggy FPS-wise, but can be useful for certain things. So honestly, just keep your MSPT low and your TPS high. I want to give a special thanks to Floppy Donkey, Spacewalker, Fallen Breath, and VK Tech for giving information for this video. And of course, Pineapple Cake for helping with the script. And with that, I want to say thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. Bye bye